just popped out to the, to the garage and I said, man, a few good gusts coming through, so I just thought, do a quick video, <clears throat> just in case I get those really big ones. <clears throat> I have seen some big gusts on the gauges, but I've not been down here to monitor it. <clears throat> Because it's just, you can hear it, he's winding up. See, you've not got many volts and you've got quite a bit of output. So that's due to the current settings that I've got on there, which are these. These are my current settings. So you can see I've got the dump load turned off because I haven't got one connected. Now this is my standard settings. So I never save these when it's got a good wind. We'll get another big blast shortly. Maybe not. Get my head in the way of the glow. It's coming from a, a direction that gets a bit of turbulence in it, so that's probably what's holding it back. Back up. Just, just uh, probably just nip outside and show you the turbine direction. Pointing towards the trees over there, those trees. So that, that block of trees, and all those trees in the distance, they're about 25 metres tall. My turbine's at 10 metres, and it just affected me slightly, so it tends to hunt when it gets away from that direction and over there. But if I swing over here, more slowly, you see there's nothing. Unless I get wind from over that direction, which is pretty good, or over here, it's pretty good. And again, we get these big tall trees across this bank in here. But because it's a solid row, I don't get it hunting between the trees. The wind doesn't come through the gap, it comes over the top. It gets slowed down for them all, so it's not as bad as when you've got a gap in the trees. And the wind can pass through the middle, and then it shifts over, and then you lose it. There's my house is over there, and then there's a few over there, housing instead of the back. But um, overall I get a pretty good result from being up there. I'll just back up and show you my other stuff on the roof. So I've also got some solar panels on the roof. I don't know if I can go far enough back. So I've got these solar panels on the roof. So all the solar panels is 315 watts each. Now the wind's dropped a little bit, it's not too bad. You can see it's quite variable. So this is my uh, 2000 watt inverter connected to the solar panels. So it's uh, not too bad, 1000 watts. And you can see from the shadow what time of day it is. So it's not got a good angle. It's quite away over to the left. So, but, uh, so I've missed my peak today, but I'm still getting a good wattage when the sun comes out, which is what's important. 
we don't want to waste a lot of power, so that's fine. So that's that 48 volt, 2 kilowatt inverter, which just works fine for this purpose. And uh, that's also charging these batteries over here. This, uh, so this is a really good unit. Uh, I highly recommend that one. Um, what I'm going to do is these bat this battery pack. I'm going to strip it all down. And I'm going to make one big 48 volt battery with a BMS for all of them because putting BMSs in series is a bad idea. They say you can do it, but I don't recommend it. This battery here has got more charging it than than all the other three, and no matter what I do, it keeps. Uh, Stopping these fully, stopping the other batteries fully charging. So that'll be. I'm still waiting for that actually arriving from China. So that and like I say, this unit, perfect, really good unit, highly recommended. Yeah, so good. And my little Raspberry Pi. Now that's controlling when the inverter switches on from this source over here. So I, had, so I had some uh, relays, which you'll probably be interested in. I had some these relays. These are, are solid-state relays. This one burned out. This one burned out. And pulled it apart inside, had a quick look at it, and it just fried it. So I'm going to stick with the uh, standard relays for that. This solid-state relay here, perfect, not a problem. Genuine article. Looks sweet. These here. Not so much. So let's turn that out here. Okay. So this guy here. I've had three of these from different manufacturers and each one has failed. So I uh, just don't like them, not gonna use them anymore. So we'll stay off those. Well it's just weird that the same manufacturer, Chew, as it were, so Chew manufacturer. Look at that working. <laughs> So it's the same manufacturer, but uh, obviously, yes, you get what you pay for, I suppose. So that's his, what was it, 90, 480 volt AC, 40 amp. This one says, what does it say? Let me see some light on that. No, this is 40 amp. It's not 40 amp. It just dies. Of, I was only pushing through about 20 amp through it and it just, it just burned out. I had mounted on steel, still burned out. Big heat sink, just gets too hot. So we won't use any of those anymore. And the wind's back again. Really, it's just random, you know, but uh, everybody should be looking at something like this though. So 22 volts, you should be getting this sort of wattage. If you've not got this wattage at 22 volts, with those settings I've just showed you on the, on the uh, inverter your turbine isn't what it says it is so this is a thousand watt turbine and it's like I say, it just spins up generates power and slows down again with DC so 22 volts 53 watts and now it's actually trying to break it so it's trying to slow it down so it's still producing 120 watts at 22 volts this is no problem at all yeah, these turbines are really good 